For 2023, the Land Rover Defender is now bigger. We get this longer 130 version, and today we're gonna take a look at the exterior details, hop inside, check out the interior and all that new space, and get it out on the road for a test drive. Let's get started. All right, let's take a look at all the exterior details of this 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. So the 130 is a new version. It is the long version, and we have different models. We've got the S, the SE, which is what we have, X Dynamic, and X. And of course the Defender, again, is gonna have this nice iconic design. It's the D7X architecture. It's not body on frame, but they say it's got triple the torsional rigidity of a body on frame design. Now right up front, we're gonna get these premium LED headlights with signature lighting on the SE trim level and up. I think they look pretty good. We've also got fog lights down there. I have a night video showing these off if you wanna check that out. This front end is definitely iconic. Looks just like the old Land Rovers with the circular design. You've got the squared LEDs next to that. Everything looks pretty cool up here. This paint color on this one is the Gondwana Stone. And it's kind of a brownish, greenish color, definitely off-roady type of color with these 20 inch five spoke, five split spoke wheels. And this one is actually in its lifted height right now. So you've got an off-road height and that's what this is in. And the Defender 130, is gonna give you extra space behind that rear axle. So you can tell this is bigger, it's longer. Um, it's all gonna be right behind that, that rear wheel. The mirrors in here are actually pretty good. You've got a camera on them, you've got turn signals in them, they're automatic dimming, tilt down in reverse, and power folding. Dimensionally, this one is 200.8 inches without the wheel, or about 212 inches with the wheel on the back. And you've got an adaptive suspension, electronic air suspension, and you can have different heights that I'll show you in a little bit, which allows you to wade through almost three feet of water. Then coming to the rear end, it wouldn't be a Defender if it didn't have this upright boxy design, and that gives you a ton of headroom and clearance in the back. You've got these matching LED squared taillights, these swing door to open, and of course, you're gonna have that full-size spare tire on the back. Now cargo space, always important in an adventure vehicle like this, you're gonna have the spare tire on the back and the swing door. So you're not gonna have an electronic, you know, lift up type of gate like that, but we've got some storage right back in there. Nice little areas. There's tons of storage nooks and cubbies in this Defender and not a ton of space behind this third row, but this is better than some vehicles that I've seen. And the cool thing is if you're loading and unloading, you can even make the suspension go up or down to make it easier to load if you wanna lower it. We've got this little cover right here. You can obviously remove that. We've got a cargo light on each side, nighttime out in the wilderness, you can get in there. We've got our jack kit under here. Perfect because we've got a huge spare tire. Land Rover also gives you a couple of tie downs and then we have a 12 volt power outlet back there. Whether you're slinging grocery bags or gear, you have a hook like this on both sides, which works great to hold some items too. And the biggest benefit to a boxy rear end is that you don't have to worry about the upper side or the glass impeding on your cargo area. It's just the same, pretty much straight up and down and I can fit a standard size backpack behind here without having to stand it upright. You've got a 40, 20, 40 split, which is great for long items. And one of the things is you're not gonna have quite as much space with this third row as you would with somebody that doesn't have a third row, but you have more length, obviously, behind the second row. To fold the second row down, it's not power fold. You just pull this lever down here and it just folds like that. This does kind of move sometimes when you're driving, which you can hear and be a little annoying. It's not perfectly flush with the third row. And you can have another 40, 20, 40 type split with that middle area right there. This definitely gives you some good length back here, but not a ton of height, considering the seats are pretty thick. All right, y'all, with our key fob for Land Rover, same key fob you're used to seeing. You can turn on the lights with this, which is pretty nice, says Land Rover on the back. No remote start on the key fob. You're gonna have to do that through the app. Kind of annoying and disappointing, but smart key system works like this. You push that to lock it. We've got power folding mirrors, or you push that to unlock it too. So it works for both ways. And then inside, Land Rover thinks about those of you that are gonna be off-roading. So if we get rid of these, we still have this rubberized type of floor and it's pretty much flush with the door. So it'll be easy to clean and not a huge hassle if you get it dirty. This is meant to go off-road and be rugged like that. Now, with our seats right here, this is what they call the grained leather. So Land Rover has different materials. This is not a fore and aft type of adjustment, just up and down. 
but you've got perforations in here. You've got decent side bolsters right there. The bottom is actually really flat. Kind of weird having big side bolsters, flat bottom. And then down here, we've got the controls that you would expect. You've got four-way lumbar support. You can adjust your uh, bolster adjustment and the rest of your typical adjustments. The steering wheel is also power tilt and telescoping. The control is on that side. And you've got a, an entry exit system to move the seat or the steering wheel when you get in and out. And you've got three position memory settings on the door. I've spent a fair amount of time in these Land Rovers before, in the Defender specifically, and I've been comfortable in these seats. I don't have any complaints with them. It doesn't feel like a tight cabin. You've got good space, plenty of headroom in here, so pretty spacious. Plus, both of these front seats are heated and ventilated. You just press, then you can move it that way or that way for the heat. There's just no massage function. Now, I want to show you this electronic suspension, this air suspension that can move us up and down and give you maximum ground clearance or make it really easy to get in and out. We're in the top off-road mode right now. Let me go ahead and drop it down. Okay, now we're in the normal mode. This is what it's gonna be most of the time that you're driving. Let's go down one more time. And now it's in access height. It doesn't take too long to get to each one and access height makes it easy to get in, easy to load, and you can control that all from inside the vehicle and the second row so on the door you still get the exposed bolts just like you do on the front soft material here i like this grab handle it's even got a nice rubber liner in here and you've got a good size bottle holder at the bottom and getting in here pretty easy you've got a grab handle on both sides and in this model this is an eight seater so we've got an eight passenger land rover here with this bench seat configuration and the same kind of materials as the front. Sitting behind where I like to sit at five foot nine, I've got good knee space and good foot space. I like these kind of pockets if you're gonna store certain things, um, you know, not just maps, but off-road material or gloves and stuff like that. And then Land Rover gives us two zone climate control for the back seat here as well. So I think three zone is standard, but we have four zone in here. That is nice to see. You can control your climate on each side. And then we've got vents right here and it actually pumps out of there pretty darn good. Plus you have overhead vents. So third row passengers, you can kind of angle those to them too, but they have their own vents as well. And in the middle, we've got this fold down armrest right here with some decent sized cup holders. The weird thing though, is we have all those blank spots for plugins, but we don't have any back here, even on this trim. These seats can slide forward and backwards, which is nice. And we can recline a little bit to get a little bit more comfortable. Now, one thing I wanna mention before getting into the third row is this back door doesn't open up quite as wide as I wish it could. Me, I'm not real big, but I'm big enough and I don't have a ton of room to squeeze in here and then get be able to pull this back. But you pull that lever, it'll fold the seat down somewhat and then you can slide it out of the way all the way up to the front and it gives you just a little space to be able to get into the third row. All right, so sitting behind the second row all the way back, again, I'm five foot nine, if I sit here, my knee is right at the back of this, but this is a terrible, I, this is not bad for a Defender like this. I didn't really expect the Defender to be this spacious, but you can move the seats forward a little bit and have more space. And you technically have three seats right here if you want it to be. And the side seat is wide enough to make it, you know, decently comfortable for me. We have our own AC vents, a little storage pocket here and a cup holder on each side, not to mention, we get our own little moon roof. That's pretty cool. And I can sit up tall. We have a tall roof. This is like safari style roof in here. And it's got plenty of headroom. Now hopping inside this Land Rover Defender, everything's gonna look the same, even though this is a longer version of the Defender. No significant changes here. We've got the same layout. And over on the door, I like some of this, you know, exposed, the just the exposed bolts here. This looks pretty cool if you ask me. And then you got a nice soft material here. You've got a durable feeling material right there and a soft material for your armrest. And I like this, this material that we kind of have sprinkled throughout the dash. It feels not as cheap as like a typical plastic and has a little bit more of a durable type of texture to it. And then down here, you don't have a good really bottle holder, but you've got a pad down here that helps keep things in place and decent sized storage. Across the dash, you'll get a big compartment like this. You've got one there coming on the other side of the steering wheel. Even behind the screen, you have some storage back there. And there's a, a decent grippy mat on the bottom that helps hold things in place. And 
it even says defender over there steering wheel is the same it's a cool looking steering wheel and it's got that same kind of material on here i wish that there was more space right here but there's a big opening at the bottom just the split spoke takes up a lot of space and just like other land rovers so you have you don't have the markings on here like you would with some other things so if i push the center button then you can control what you see on this digital display. So you can customize what you have on the left side, the right side, whether or not you have gauges on both sides, or you can kind of make it however you want. So you can customize this to make it look however you want. Land Rover is gonna give you automatic windshield wipers. Plus we have the cold climate package. So we have a heated windshield, heated washer, nozzles as well. And if you live in cold climates, that would be very nice. That also includes our heated steering wheel. Higher end models will give you a head up display. We just don't have one in this particular model. And then over here, this Defender 130 version is going to give us this larger screen. So this is the PV Pro. This is the 11.4 inch screen standard on this particular model instead of the smaller display. This is the only screen that you use. You don't have the smaller screens or, or lower screens like some other Land Rover models. And it works fine. I've got no complaints with it. Um, it's all touchscreen reliant. You do have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. It works well. Takes up a good portion of the screen, not quite the whole thing. But you can customize the screen a little bit too and see a ton of different information on here. Off-roading information as well. A lot of different customizable settings. Over here, you've got some shortcuts. So if you hit that, right off the bat, you'll have your brake hold, you'll have the brightness for the screen, and then you've got uh, a little bit more controls that you can delve into a lot more controls actually if we go right here tons of different things including wi-fi all your vehicle settings different apps you can have on here so Land Rover gives you a couple different options for audio we have the top end 14 speaker 700 watt meridian surround sound on this model our shifter is a little bit interesting right here kind of protruding out from that section, it kind of reminds me of a minivan, but not a big deal at all. If you're gonna to touch something in this lower corner, it does kind of get in the way. Otherwise, not much to complain about with that. And then we've got dual zone climate control right here. You've got heated and ventilated seats. You can control your suspension right there, off-road, um, <clears throat> downhill assist, and then traction control. You can change your drive modes here, low range, auto temperature control. Everything that you need is pretty easy to get to hit that button, and then you can change through your drive mode. All of our drive modes are gonna be eco, comfort, a ton of them. Grass, gravel, snow, you got mud and ruts, you've got sand, rock crawling, wading through water, and your own configurable mode as well. One little complaint is we have the volume knob way over there. You can control it on the steering wheel, but I still like having my own little volume knob up close. It's just a little reach over there. Down here, very good storage. So you've got a couple USB ports, 12 volt power outlet, You've got this huge center console area, this two-tiered center console, so you got storage down there, an extra tray down there. Coming back, we've got our cup holders right here, which are good size and a good location, and then a wireless charging mat that can fit a plus-size phone like mine. Center console, nice and soft, decent padding on here. The opening inside is interesting. It almost is like a cooler in here, but it's just a big open storage area. Land Rover gives you a soft opening and lockable glove box. We have an automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls, LED interior lighting, a little bit of an ambient light coming down from there. And then we've got this panoramic roof. So one single panoramic roof and then a third panoramic or a third roof over the last row. And of course, visors are gonna slide out. Now the Defender gives you a few different options under the hood. You can get a four cylinder standard or a mild hybrid inline six like this one or a V8. But under the hood right here, we've got this three liter inline six twin scroll turbo with a 48 volt supercharger, 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque with their ZF eight speed transmission. It is all wheel drive standard and you can get 100% of the torque to go to the front axle or the rear axle. And towing on this is pretty good too. Even with this engine, 8,200 pounds. Miles per gallon isn't great, just at 19 combined on this extended version. All right, y'all, we're behind the wheel in this Defender now, and I've driven the Defender a couple different times, but this is my first time with the 130, the long version here. So, and this inline six, this is what I've driven in the other ones. This is a, a nice, peppy powered plant. So, 
first impressions is you can have a good ride height even in just normal height we're in normal height right now and it's got a good ride height to it if you go to off-road mode you've got even more visibility out of this thing and it's nice to have that especially if you are going to go off-road and the wading through water you know it's what this land rover is meant to do but if you're going to drive it in town city driving lots of you know roads it's a smooth vehicle it's pretty quiet it's comfortable it's smooth even though you have pretty large wheels on here it soaks up bumps really well in fact i mean you could mistake this for a range rover i mean the ride comfort is definitely definitely good once you're in here and we don't have laminated glass i'll talk more about the noise in a little bit and why that might not be the case but handling in here is still okay too for being such a big tall boxy suv it handles surprisingly well it's not sports car sport suv type but it still handles well and with this mild hybrid setup we've got the electric supercharger this inline six with the turbo everything is pretty responsive and punchy so you don't have to hammer the pedal down in order to get a good amount of power out it comes out pretty darn quick the one thing i will say you know we don't have terrible body lean side to side but you will get some squat and some nose dive in this probably from the softness of the suspension with that so if you really hammer on it it's going to raise that front end if you slam on the brakes that front end is going to nose dive now we'll test this thing out around some corners going to go ahead and bury it pedal down big delay there but it revved up quick. You've got quite a sound that comes out of here too. It definitely was delayed getting going, but right now, just in normal mode too, even though it's big and tall, you can feel the weight, like it wants to drift out that way. But you can handle pretty confidently in here for a vehicle this size, better than what pretty much anything else this size is going to feel like and passing power is great i mean you can just pick up speed so quick with this turbo in here and this isn't even the most powerful option you can get a more powerful option so we don't have paddle shifters but you can move this over to s mode like sequential and shift with your gear selector here it's not the best it's not the fastest or the sportiest it's probably more ideal just to control your gears in certain situations I mean, it's certainly not bad it's not slow at shifting it's just not you know something most people will practically use so this one does not have the adaptive radar cruise control you can get that but this has the lane keeping system so it'll help prevent you from leaving your lanes we've got blind spot indicators in here as well So you can hear some powertrain noise and then as we get on a really rough textured road surface where I do all my decibel ratings, this was surprisingly quiet on here. I mean, it's not aerodynamic. It's not meant to really be quiet. We don't even have laminated double pane glass over here and that's probably because if you're off-roading, you flip it, you go in water, you need to break a window. It's easier to break these windows instead of those laminated glass windows. But I think Land Rover, they must have added some kind of sound suppression to this compared to when I first drove one back in like 2020 because it, my, my ratings were quieter on the interstate with wind noise and on roads like this with rough texture. So it's not the quietest vehicle obviously, but it's pretty quiet considering its size and what it's meant for. But ergonomically in here, I like the way everything is laid out. I'm very comfortable controls are easy to get to the visibility is good out of here and it drives really nice for being off-road capable it's still comfortable it's quick and it handles just fine now to wrap things up on this 2023 land rover defender 130 this is the longer version so if you wanted a three-row defender with more space in the third row this is the one to get 
You can still dress it up. This is not the top trim level, but you can get more features, a nicer, more premium Land Rover that still has that rugged appeal, the off-road capability, and the luxury to go with it. It sure does get expensive though. This one, not the top trim, not even close to the top trim, is still in the $80,000 plus range. So let me know what you think of this Defender. I love all the appeal that comes with it, the rugged luxury, but let me know what you think down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more and have a good day.